Okay, let's talk about multiplying by eight. So when we multiply by eight, there's lots of different strategies that we can use if we don't already know the facts. So I just want to discuss a couple of those strategies with you today. So let's think about what eight times three means. Eight times three is like saying eight groups of three. So if we were to draw that out in an array, it might look something like this. So here we have eight groups or eight rows and each group has three in it. So I want you to imagine that this is eight rows of chairs that we've set up and each row has three chairs and we want to know how many chairs there are, are all together. So let's talk about how we could figure this out. Well, maybe I think to myself, okay, I know that four rows of three makes 12. And then I see another four rows of three and I know that that's 12. So if we have 12 in here and 12 down here, then we have 24 altogether, don't we? So this shows us that an eights fact is going to be the double of a fours fact. So four times three was 12. If I double the amount of groups, then I double the product. Let's look at that again. So let's say I have eight times six. Well, let's first of all think about four times six. And maybe I know that that's 24. So if I had four rows of chairs with six chairs in each row, that gives me 24 chairs. Now, if I double the amount of rows, so I add another four rows of chairs so that now I have eight rows, then the number of chairs is going to double as well. So I will have 48. So that's one way that we can do the eights facts. We can use the double of the fours fact. Now let's think of some other connections that we can make when we multiply by eight. Let's think about eight times two and discuss some different connections. So here are eight groups of two. Do you see how every row is a group? So there's eight rows and there's two in each row or there's two columns. So what else could I do here? Maybe I could figure out what five groups of two is. Five groups of two I know is 10. And then another three groups of two is six. So I know that now there's going to be 16 altogether because I just add the number of chairs in each of those smaller groups. So that's another way that I could figure out the eights facts. So when you are stumped on a fact, I want you to think about all the different connections that you can make to things that you already know. So let's go through the eights facts from one to 10. And I'm going to tell you a strategy for each one that I might use, but your strategy might be different. And that is absolutely okay. And some of these you might just know, and that is wonderful too. But if you don't know them, I want to make sure that you have a strategy so that you always know how you can figure it out. So I'm just gonna tell you about the strategies that I might use for these facts. So eight times one, I know my ones facts because I know that anything times one is itself, so that's eight. For eight times two, I'm going to use the doubles because I see that I'm multiplying by two. So I know that I can think about the double of eight and that's 16. When I multiply by three, I know that I'm just gonna add one more group of eight to my two groups of eight from up there. So I had 16, now I'm just gonna add one more group of eight and that gives me 24. For eight times four, I'm going to think in my head, hmm, I'm going to think about four times eight, and I know that four times eight is the double of two times eight, isn't it? Because four is the double of two. Two times eight was 16, so four times eight must be the double of that, which is 32. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Now for eight times five, 
I'm going to think about what I know by multiplying by 10. Because I know that 10 times 8 is 80. 5 times 8 is going to be half of that because I'm taking away half the rows, right? I had 10 rows and now I only have 5. So it's going to be half. It's going to be 40. Now let's talk about 6 times or 8 times 6 or 6 times 8. I know that 5 groups of 8 was 40. So 6 groups of 8 is just going to be 8 more. So that's going to be 48. Let's talk about, you know what, I'm going to skip ahead here to 8 times 10. Because that one, 10 groups of 8, I know, or 8 groups of 10 is 80. Now let's go back to 9 groups of 8 or 8 groups of 9. Either way, I want to think about it as okay. So I knew that 10 groups of 8 was 80, so 9 groups of 8 is going to be 8 less. So that's going to be 72. Now, 8 times 8, I remember from my, my square facts because I remember that if I made an array that was 8 by 8, I just remember that one was 64. And then for 8 times 7, this one is sometimes a tricky fact, but let's think about what we could do for this one to figure it out easily. So what do I know? Hmm. Well, I know that 4 times 7 is 28. I remember that fact. So four groups of seven makes 28. So eight groups of seven is going to be double, isn't it? Because I'm doubling the amount of rows. So what's the double of 28? That's 56. So that's how I thought of this one this time. Now, like I said before, if you have different strategies that you use for the eights facts, that's totally fine. Or maybe some of these you just know without a strategy and that's wonderful too. But it's always important that we understand what multiplication means and what we're actually doing so that if you do forget a fact, you always have a strategy to fall back on. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you check back for more multiplication videos.